Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we will learn about step response of a series RLC circuit. Okay, now let's first see what is called step response or what is a step response. The step response is obtained by the sudden application of a DC source to a circuit. So let's see. This is the circuit. The switch is open. The moment we close this switch, so what will happen? This 12 volt is applied across the capacitor. And if you see in this diagram, before T is equal to zero, the voltage applied is zero. And at T is equal to zero, the voltage applied is 12 volts. So this is like a step. And that is why this will be called a step input or a step uh, response of the circuit. Now let's recall that in case of a source free series RL3 circuit where there was no source, we had the uh, these three equations for the three cases over damped, critically damped and under damped cases. Now in case of a forced response or a step response, since there is a voltage source, so this voltage source will come into play and the equation instead of a current equation this will become the voltage equations so voltage equations instead of current and addition of the voltage source vs the other terms remains same okay the problem solving strategy as we have been following uh, are in these five steps so we'll go step by step in solving the problems okay now before we start solving the problem just a recap about the unit step function it is represented uh, written as ut and ut is 0 for less than 0 so ut is 0 for t less than 0 and ut is 1 for t greater than 1 so ut is 1 for t greater than 1 now what's its implications let's see from a circuit now this is the circuit the input voltage here is written as 12 ut now what does this mean if you look at this this means that for t less than 0 this will be 12 into 0 so it will be some kind of something like this the voltage source will become 0 for t less than 0 and for t greater than 0 it will be 12 multiplied by this one so it will be simply 12 volt for t greater than 0 so we have to keep this concept in mind in solving the problem okay so this is the problem we have to find the expression for vct now a point to note that generally we don't write c but some books uh, write c for the voltage across capacitor but even if we don't write we just say v0 or v that means the voltage across capacitor now this book is following VCT so that's fine now what is given here I0 or IL0 that is the inductor current 4 ampere this is at T equal to 0 or T less than 0 and similarly the voltage across capacitor VC0 is given as minus 4 volt So this is the circuit for T less than 0 and this is for T greater than 0 that we discussed. We will follow this. Okay, so that is, this is what he is saying that VCT and VT are the same. So we go to the first step. For T less than 0 we have to find the initial conditions that is I0 and V0. Fortunately it is given here so we will just copy that this is our first step now let's go to the second step for t greater, greater than 0 we have to get dv0 dt now note that since this is a series circuit so inductor current and the capacitor current are same so i0 or il0 is equal to ic0 and ic we know is given by c dv dt so it will be written as c dv0 dt and from these two we can derive a formula that is dv0 dt 
is equal to I zero C. So we'll just we'll write this always to find dv0 dt and now in this case we plug in the value of i0 this i0 which we had uh, 4 ampere so we write 4 and the value of the capacitor from here 0 0.04 so that means dv0 dt is 100 so that is the second step now we go to third step we got to find alpha and omega Okay, simple, just put in the values of R, here 6, and L is 1, so alpha is 3, omega similarly 1 over under root LC, so putting in the value of L and C, omega naught is 5. Now since omega, alpha is less than omega, alpha is less than omega, this circuit is over damped circuit, uh, sorry, under damped circuit. Okay, now let's move to the step number four. We have to now choose the voltage equation based on alpha and omega. We have learned that alpha is less than omega, therefore the circuit is under damped circuit. And these are the three choices. From here we pick the equation for under damped circuit. So this is the equation. Now let's see what all are the unknown. Number one is the Vs. Uh, number two is omega d. And then alpha. We have already calculated alpha. And finally we'll find a1 and a2 also. So first of all omega d is given by this formula. So we plug in the values of omega and alpha so we get omega d is equal to 4 then vss is the uh, vs or vss means the voltage at steady state or voltage infinity so that means that when the circuit is connected for a long time what will be the voltage across the capacitor or what for what voltage will the capacitor be charged so let's see from this circuit when it is connected for a long time, the inductor be will behave like a short circuit and the capacitor will behave like an open circuit. So whatever is the source voltage that will apply across this open circuit or, and that will be the VSS or VS. So we can say that VS is 12 volt because the input is 12 volt so the capacitor will charge to 12 volt. And now we plug in all the values. So this is 12. Alpha we have put in 3 from here. And uh, omega D is 4. So this is our uh, general equation. And now we have to find the values of A1 and A2. So move on to the next step. Calculate the value of A1 and A2. The procedure is that in the general equation that we have, we first of all put T is equal to zero to get one equation. So let's do that first. So we put T is equal to zero here. So this becomes V0 and 12A. Now V0 we have already found or given was minus four. So we plug in that value here and from here a1 is minus 16. So that is one equation we got. For the second equation we have to differentiate this and then put t is equal to 0. So let's do that. So differentiating we get this term. This will now both of these will be the differentiation of the product terms because this is one term and this is another term. So following the product term rules we get these terms. And now we put t is equal to 0, so dv0 dt, all the sine terms will become 0 and all the cosine terms will become, our cos will become 1. So we get minus 3a1 and from here we get 4a2. And we also know dv0 dt we have calculated earlier, so we'll plug in that value, it's, it was 100. So it, this is our second equation by plugging in 100 here. Now we have A1 16, so we plug in that value and we get A2 to be 13. So we have found A1 and A2 both. 
now we plug in here in the main equation and so this is our final answer now let's do another problem this is example 8.71 solve in your book but we'll just try to make it simpler to understand Again, we follow the same technique. For t less than 0, we have to find i0 and v0. Since it is not given here, then we'll look at the circuit now. This is opening at t is equal to 0. That means before t is equal to 0, this is closed. So our circuit will become something like this. Since for t is less than 0, this switch is closed and the voltage is being applied for a long time. Therefore, the inductor will behave like a short circuit and the capacitor will behave like an open circuit. So this is the circuit and now the current that we find through the inductor will be our I0. So this is the only path that we have. So 24 divided by 5 plus 1, 6 will give 4 amperes that is I0. So I0 is 24 divided by uh, 6. 4 ampere and now we can find this voltage the voltage will be same as what is at across 1 ampere uh, sorry 1 ohm resistance so we know the current 4 multiplied by 1 so this should be 4 volt so V0 will be I0 into 1 that is 4 volt so this is the first step we got second step dv0 dt we just use this formula for now the switch is open and this is the circuit that we have and we know the current through the inductor I0 we already know we had calculated in the previous one so we will plug in that and we will plug in the value of C so this was 4 and C 0 0.25 so dv0 dt is 16 So we are now on the third step. We have to calculate alpha and omega naught. This is the circuit for t greater than zero. We are not shorting the inductor or the opening the capacitor because we are still in the transient state. So we plug in the value of R as five because this resistance is now out of the circuit. So five over two into L and similarly omega naught LC now since alpha is greater than omega alpha is greater than omega so we have an overdamped case and now we can select the equation which is related to overdamped case so this will be our equation for voltage so this is the voltage equation now based on alpha and omega we have to choose the equation which we have already done and then plug in the values so this was the equation now we can see the unknowns here are vs s1 and s2 that is the two roots so let's calculate the roots first of all this is the formula for the uh, root s1 plugging in the values this comes to be minus 1 and similarly for S2 just the sign change here so this becomes minus 4 and now for T greater greater than 0 the inductor is short capacitor is open this was already open so now we have to see what is VSS or what is the final value to which the capacitor is charged now since this is open circuit so this 24 volt will charge the capacitor that means Vs is 24 Vs or V final or Vss 24 volt now we plug in into this equation for 24 A1 e raised to the power minus T e raised to the power A2 e raised to the power minus 4T and now the unknown A1 and A2 we have to find that will be our next step okay now this is our uh, fifth step we have to find a1 and a2 and as we know that from the voltage equation if you put t is equal to 0 to get one equation and dv0 dt or differentiation 
to get the second equation. So let's get the first one. We put t is equal to 0 here. So this will become v0, 24. This is a1 and a2 because e raised to the power 0 will become 1. Now we know that v0 is 4. We had uh, found this earlier. So plug in that. This is our first equation, minus 20, a1, a2. Now we'll differentiate this. So taking the derivative of 7.1, we get this result. Put t is equal to 0 here. So this is what we get. dv0 dt, we have already found out its value to be 16. So plug in that here. So plugging in, this is our second equation, 7.4. Now solving 7.2 and 7.4. Uh, we can find a1 and a2 so I'm sure you can find it so these are the two values now we plug in these values of a1 and a2 into 7.1 equation to get the final voltage equation so this is our voltage equation now in the question he is also asked about the current equation so let's see so we have to find it now we'll use or take help of this formula. I inductor T is also equal to I capacitor T is equal to C dV dt. We have the formula for V now. So we'll plug in here. This is V. So we plug in. And so we get I T C dV dt is this values. Take differentiation of the term. So this is the result after differentiation. I'm sure you can do that. And so the final answer is as shown here. So I hope this gives you an underst understanding as to how to take care of this type of a problem. If you follow these steps, it will be very, very easy. Thank you.